Many serious runners say they have experienced an elevated euphoric consciousness just by running long distances. This idea was examined in a 2008 New York Times article titled, Yes, Running Can Make You High. This article claims that the runner's high phenomenon has led some to experience a euphoric effect upon completion of a workout as if the individual had just taken mood-altering drugs. The physiological premise behind the runner's high phenomenon is that there are real biochemical effects of exercise on the brain. The endorphin or endogenous morphine is an endogenous opioid neuropeptide, which is a chemical that is released in the brain in order to reduce one's sensation of pain and to provide this euphoric effect. In order to understand how endorphins work, we must first understand how neuropeptides, such as beta endorphin, influence the activity of the brain. When we perform a particular activity, the membrane potential of a neuron may depolarize to a certain point where it can pass threshold and initiate an action potential. Once the action potential is initiated, it will travel down the axon to the synaptic terminals. Finally, at the terminals, the action potential will provoke the release of neuropeptides, which will then go on to perform their particular functions. Beta endorphins are prim primarily synthesized and stored in the anterior pituitary gland, which is at the base of the brain just below the hypothalamus. These neuropeptides combine to mu opioid receptors at either the presynaptic or the postsynaptic nerve terminal. When they bind to these mu receptors, they can then exert their effect by inhibiting release of GABA, which then results in the excess production of dopamine. Mu opioid receptors work to decrease pain by generating euphoria. These are the same receptors involved in morphine abuse, which describes the phrase runner's high. But how do we know that these natural opiates are being secreted during exercise? An article titled The Runner's High, Opioidergic Mechanisms in the Human Brain, found that binding of FDPN and opioid antagonists decreased after 30 minutes of running. This was in line with subjective euphoria ratings completed by the participants as FDPN binding was inversely related with euphoria. This led the research team to conclude that endogenous opioid release occurs in the brain following intense exercise. This natural high is not just exclusive to runners, but has proven to be true in other endurance athletes as well. Researchers at the University of Oxford in England examined the rower's high and found that synchronized exercise leads to higher pain tolerance and therefore greater endorphin release. But if endurance activities such as running really do cause elation via endogenous opioid release, then how come so many people absolutely hate running. At this point, it is pretty clear that significant physical exercise can lead to endogenous opioid release, as proposed by the New York Times article. However, it is not clear just how much of that particular exercise you need to perform in order to achieve this high. Do you need to run one mile, two miles, a half marathon, or even a full marathon before experiencing this phenomenon? More research must be done to determine the particular amount of exercise needed to experience the runner's high, but as for now, we do know that running can indeed make you high.